Welcome, welcome everybody to another great episode of Real Life Matters. And of course, I'm in your host, D-Boss. And I hope everybody's doing their 15 minutes of laughing per day. And um, because that's going to help you with your whole persona, release all those bad endorphins in your body. It's going to tone your abs. But it doesn't mean that you have to stop going to the gym. And uh, it also helps you with with all other things in your life. And a lot of people say, well, maybe I don't have anybody to laugh with. Well, call somebody, talk to somebody, you know, that's what you can do. You know, and if you watch something on TV, watch something funny, watch some comedians, you know, that always um, sparks up yourself. But anyways, I just hope everybody's doing their due diligence. And we're gonna hear something from our one of our sponsors, uh, Joanne James from Vital Steps to Vital Health. And we'll be right back with our special guest, as he's been here many times. Welcome to Your Vital Steps to Better Health and Fitness. I'm Joanne James. Today we're going to talk about the effects of no exercise on the muscles. Many people are spending a lot of time sitting at their desk and not exercising, as well as the internet has taken people out of the exercise realm and into sitting down and playing games on their phones. There is a major detriment to not exercising. When you don't exercise, your muscles become weak and that impacts your bones. So now you have both weak muscles and weak bones. The other problem is you lose strength and the daily activities that you like to do become more difficult. So it's important to be doing some form of exercise to keep the muscles toned. And thirdly, your body composition will change. You will end up getting more body fat and less muscle mass, which then tends to be unattractive and you lose energy and you become more fatigued. So do yourself a favor, get into a great exercise routine, find somebody who can put you on a great program. Your body's going to love it. I'm Joanne James, and this has been your vital steps to better health and fitness. Take care. Thank you, Joanne James, for that um, health tip. Everybody get up there and do some type of movement. I know everybody's busy and they're running around and they got all their devices going, but, you know, just make sure you do that. Well, I got somebody here that's been here all before. And, um, you know, of course, he's doing his talking and speaking and spoken stuff. So with no further ado, we are, I'm going to introduce you up roots up from the roots presented with Dwayne morgan and he's doing when brothers speak spoken word concert so he's going to tell us all about that so with no further ado here's Dwayne morgan hey how are you <laughs> i'm good i'm good i'm good i'm glad to see you come back and you're always busy every time i see this man people he's always busy <laughs> I, I, I try to stay as busy and active as possible. <laughs> All right. So you're doing another another spoken word when brothers speak uh, concert, and yeah. then, you know, and it falls right in line with them um, for this month for the men with mental health and all different kinds of issues. So you know, so tell us a little bit about that. All right. So when brothers speak is going to be coming up on December 9th. And as you alluded to right now, we're ending off of November, getting out of November. And in November, we we put the spotlight on men and mental health and us taking care of ourselves. And I think one of the important ways that we take care of ourselves is by actually speaking, is by not holding things inside, is by letting people know what is going on with us, what our experiences are. And through When Brothers Speak, I've created a platform for men, uh, for black men from different places to to be able to have that outlet through the art of the spoken word. And this year we're celebrating 25 years of, of doing that. So it's- uh, 25 very, years? 25 years. Wow. Years. So it is uh, uh, a landmark and very special to to have been creating this platform for such a long time and to, um, you know, gather community together to, to celebrate something that I started way back in 1999. Wow. So people are they, they just gravitating to you with this. So are you getting a lot of men testifying and saying, thank you, Dwayne, for making me speak out about certain things that I couldn't? Uh, I mean, uh, the the people who are on the bill are all, you know, professional speakers. Yes. So they, they, they go around, they do their spoken word. So you don't really hear that too much from them. 
but you'll hear it more so from the men who might be in the audience who will yes. say hey, that poem or that guy really spoke about an experience that I've had. So what we try to do is we try to be the mouthpiece for those people who don't feel like they can speak up, for those people who don't feel like they have an outlet, who, who don't feel like they have a voice. So we try to write and create stories that other people see themselves in. And you know, as I stand on stage as, as a Black man, I understand I'm representing a community of Black men who have right. probably gone through very similar experiences as what I might be speaking about. Okay, and we know you're you're, you're like shh, shh, shh. you you got <laughs> you got the whip out for your for everybody for timing. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, timing is a crucial thing with Dwayne. You don't yes. tell us why. <laughs> well, I think it's you know it's it's just really a matter of just kind of you know a respecting you know it, mm -hmm. it's every artist on the show has 20 minutes. And if you're in the first half of the show and you go 30 minutes, that means somebody else gets 10 minutes less. So, you know, it's really about the the respect that we have to have for each other, the respect that we have to have for time, the respect we have to have for, for the show. Um, and everybody just, you know, play your position and do what it is that, that you have been called upon to do. The, you know, if, if, if the crowd is loving you, that's great leave them wanting more, right? But don't, don't go and do more time, <laughs> take time from somebody else. So, we run a very tight entree, entree. Yeah, and, it, and it has to be this way because you know we do the show in you know in a theater so everything is timed out if it goes over time everybody gets paid time and a half and all sorts of stuff starts to happen and there's no reason for that and i think you know as black people and even in the black community there are things we have to learn start the event on time yes um, like so Oh, I'm going to just sit there and wait for more people to come. But the people who actually respected you and showed up on time are here. So that yes. means you're making a conscious decision to prioritize the people who are late over the people who actually showed up for you on time. So right. everybody knows when they come to my events, there's a 10 minute window. If it's <laughs> eight o'clock, starting is eight ten, and okay. it starts later than eight ten. It's not on me. There's some other technical issue. That has to happen but i've built that reputation over the last 30 years where people know expect and respect that about my events so they'll try to make sure that they're there on time because we're not going to sit around and wait for the late people no if you miss it you miss it you paid your money i'll never you get that you know why are you going to come late for something and you know the thing starts at eight and there they're showing up at 11 o'clock does that make sense it, it absolutely does not, and I don't go for it. I don't allow it. Uh, I don't condone it. So my event it starts when it says it's going to oh, start, yeah. and if you miss it, you paid your money and you missed it. So you know that's that's not on me. That's on you. That's your choice. So, um, but I think you know we have to have those kinds of standards in the community for the things that we are doing, uh, in order for people to take them seriously and, and truly respect them. So how do you keep coming up with different skits? Do you, you, do you sit down and figure it out for like the next six months or do you just go off the cuff? Um, well, I mean, I'm always writing. I'm always creating. There's always life happening. So, you know, every every show that goes by, uh, I'm left with 365 days to create, you know, a new 20 minutes. And I'm the only artist who's in the show every year. All the other artists, it rotates. It's different people every oh. year. So okay. that's why, you know, people keep coming. So even this year, uh, we have a brother named Suli Brakes who's coming from London, England to perform. Wow. We have a brother uh, named Sean Williams who just got nominated for, for a Grammy for Spoken Word. He's coming from Oakland. We have a brother from Hamilton. We have uh, Ontario's Poet, Poet Laureate, Randella J, who's going to be there. So there's six artists, six black men every year. Every year I change up the the men um so that people are getting you know different stories and different styles and different vibes and and seeing all the different things that black men are speaking about and thinking about well was it you that said that if you come to your event you should come out and meet men there or something was it no i didn't say come out and meet men but if you want to meet a woman definitely come if you want to meet a woman definitely come because all of my events there's eight women to every man that is there so any man who's looking for a woman come to my events because they ask me all the time Dwayne where are the men and I don't have an answer I don't know I keep trying to say men fix up your like just just show up I don't care if you don't like me I don't care if you don't like poetry just do it for yourself show up 
because there's a lot of women there who are just looking for decent men, men who care about culture, intellect, all these kinds of things. Show up. Show up. <laughs> or be that's left it. up. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just show up. All right. So after this, what do you have coming up after this, this thing? Uh, so um, after this, the, the very next day, I, I fly to Ghana. I'm doing some performances and festivals in, in Ghana. Then I come back in January. I do a, um, a, a singers competition. So I give away $1,000 to local singers every year. And then okay. in March uh, will be the 24th anniversary of When Sisters Speak, which is the, the women's version of When Brothers Speak. Oh, oh, you do the Sisters Speak. I didn't know. I didn't realize yeah. that. I do one well, for Come back and let us know. Absolutely. Absolutely. I didn't know you did. I didn't know that you did the women. Wow. Yep. See, you learn. You always learn something new here on Real Life Matters. I'm telling you. <laughs> All right. So, are there any shout outs that you want to give? Uh, I mean, just shout out to you for always inviting me to be here. Shout out to my uh, publicist, Sasha. Thank you to all the people who, who tune in to support you and all the things they learn about uh, uh, happening in the community. And just all the people who've been supporting me for the last uh, 30 years that I've been doing this and for supporting When Brothers Speak for the last 25 years. All right. So where can they follow you and find you and reach out to you? And if they want to be a part of your um, organization for the next time, so what do they have to do? All right. So to, to find me, it's pretty easy. It's just Dwayne underscore Morgan on most social media. If you just put it in Google, all the stuff comes up. So it's real easy to find. And to be in the shows, you kind of just have to be out in the community. You have to be performing. You have to be doing your thing. When Brother Speak is the largest event of its kind in North America. So okay. the people that get, get booked for it are people who hone their craft. They're they're the top of the top kind of thing. So they've been, you know, they've been traveling, they've been doing things for you. They have a resume behind them. So, you know, it's not like, oh, I just started to write. I want to be in the show that no, 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 no. You got, you got to pay your dues. You got to like, you know, you got to work your way up the ranks and then you get, you get into that because in the world of spoken word, there isn't much more that people could say is that is bigger than doing the when brothers speak show. Okay. All right, you hear that, people? You got to hone your craft and you got to be out there with the peoples to be involved with Dwayne Morgan. So, you know, get out there. You got If you got some work to do, you got some work to do. <laughs> All right, well, Dwayne, you know, it's been a pleasure having you on and you're going to come back and let us know when the women, because, you know, I was just, I'm just blown away. I didn't realize that the women, but I, I have, you know, I've never came on with the women. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna make that happen in the new year. Okay, yeah, we yeah, so that the people could know. But anyways, I do want to thank you for telling us about our journey, and the journey continues on. You know, when brothers speak with Dwayne Morgan, and I do want to thank everybody for watching. So bye for now, and good night. All right, take care.